I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? Peace, family. Um, I hope everyone is actually staying warm. <laughs> if you're on the East Coast, it's, it's a, little, um, a little chilly on the East Coast today or tonight. Um, I want to welcome you back to another exciting Happy Talks. I already see Rashamela Combo is in the house. And um, this young lady is actually um, coming on our trip to Egypt next month. I mean, excuse me, not next month. In um, in February. So this is, you know, this is great. DM also, how you doing? Sun Tempo, Kalia. All right. So before we, um, you know, we have our regular announcements um, that, you know, we have to make. But um, before we get started with those, I just want to say, um, I just want to give some some thank yous and a lot of thank yous. So this weekend, Hoppy was uh, actually in a couple of places. We had a uh, screening of the film and a panel discussion um, in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. And it was definitely a city of brotherly love. Um, I want to first just give a huge shout out and a big old thank you to uh, WURD Word Radio because they came through with interviews, uh, Brother Shamari and um, and David Barnes really, you know, they, they just came through. They interviewed various cast members throughout their shows for like about two weeks, which was really super nice. And it got, um, you know, real, it, it packed the place. So I want to say thank you um, and, and, and beautiful, you know, hugs and kisses out to Brother Shamari and David um, Barnes. And also, you know, behind, you know, every behind every great man, there's always a great woman right there. And so shout out to Sa Sandra Lee, because, you know, as soon as I told her what we were doing, blah, 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 blah. Next thing I know, we had our commercial on the radio. <laughs> so I want to say, you know, big um, shout out to Sandra Lee. Also, our brother Omawale Oma Africa. If you guys remember, Omawale um, came with me to um, Egypt to interview Anthony Browder on the Hoppy. And um, again, a couple of days notice, he packed up and rolled out to Africa um, with me. So he, you know, is from Philadelphia and he really helped to put a lot of things in, in place, um, which was super cool. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Omawale. And then, you know, a lot of times when we do screens and stuff, it seems relatively easy. You know, you just show the film, we have a little panel discussion, it's over. But, you know, all of that takes a bunch of people. And so a lot of times people think that it's just myself and Taiki doing everything. And oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, it's not us. We literally have a team. We need a bigger team. So if anybody want to do something, you know, shoot us an email. But we do have, you know, a, um, a couple of people that have been really, you know, instrumental in helping us to get to where we are and definitely pulling off screening. So I want to give a huge shout out to um, first, Dion Grayman. She is um, one of the founders of We Won Brownsville. She came through, rolled with me all the way to Philly from um, the mighty Republic of Brooklyn. So shout out to uh, Dion Grayman. Also, um, Dr. Brittany Motley, who came up for, um, and this, this screening was pretty cool because we actually had a uh, Jabari Ozazi who was on the, the um, He's, he's in the film Hoppy. He also led a, um, like a, not like a, but a, muse a museum tour of the University of Pennsylvania's um, art museum, the Egyptian wing. So he was there a little bit early. So if you bought a ticket to see that, then you were able to come and see Hoppy uh, later on that evening. So Dr. Brittany Motley rolled up for that and she came out and helped us. Now you guys also might know um, Dr. Watley because she is, I mean, she's also from my hometown, Detroit, but we interviewed her along with Camille Yarbrough and Dr. Julian Malvo. So you can always go to that YouTube channel and check out 
our past hobby talks. So shout out to Brittany for helping us, um, you know, with the screening and Nafisa Hope. So I know you guys are, sometimes you guys see Nafisa in the chat. She's always, um, you know, hearts and all types of little uh, emojis. And, uh, but she also, she came down to help us with the screening, but she also does memes for us on Wednesdays, she does the, um, excuse me, she does the buy black segment and she does the, like the motivation on Sunday. So shout out to her for coming through. Thank you. Her and her husband rolled in. So that's what's up. Anthony Edwards from the Shrine of Mayotte. Thank you um, for helping us get set up. And, um, and then part just like our team, you know, we have Sunette B who is also from the Shrine of Mayotte uh, Mayot, and um, Sirius B. They create a lot of our visual things that we see, along with Michael Drake, who um, is, uh, he's been with us for over like 15 years. And he creates a lot of the, um, the graphics that you see. So as you can see, there's a lot of people that kind of help us to get to where we are to get, you know, get all this stuff out to you guys. So shout out to all of all of them for helping us. Now, the panel discussion we had was, um, it was myself, Jabari Ozazi, and Dr. Leonard Jeffries. But it was getting so good that Dr. Rosalind Jeffries was like, oh, no, no, no. I got to get up a little piece of this little microphone. <laughs> she stepped up on stage in the middle and she tore the house down. So shout out to Dr. Rosalind Jeffries and Dr. Leonard Jeffries for really giving um, every person who paid a ticket, they got their money's worth on Saturday. Which leads me to the next thing. Where is our next city? It is D.C. Now, this we had to. This is going to be so fabulous. We just renamed it. So we were calling it Hop, Hoppy City Tours. You know, we have D.C. left. We're going to um, Atlanta after that, and Bridgeport, Connecticut, and then Houston. Well, because we're going to have this huge event in Washington D.C. on December fifth, um, it is a it is a night of Black empowerment. OK, so you will get to see the Hoppy film screening and then we are privy okay, to sit down and have a lecture in person with Anthony Browder. OK, and the cool thing about this is that he's going to be him. It's no panel. It's going to be a lecture with him talking directly to Hoppy viewers Um and the uh, the super cool thing about this, because I'm want, I'm going to read this because I'm going to make sure we're clear about what he's going to talk about. So we were talking, you know, about you know doing DC, and we asked Anthony, well, what? Excuse me, Dr. Browder, um, what would you like to um, you know to talk about? And uh, you know, he was very very clear. Almost like in two seconds, he wrote this back. He he was like the the title of his lecture will be why Nile Valley civilization matters to people of African ancestry, explanation mark. Not a question, explanation mark, okay? So this is gonna be, this This is like straight fire. Y'all know how much I love everybody that comes on the Happy Talks. Um, Anthony Browder has a special place in my heart forever, forever, forever. His beautiful daughter, Atlantis. Um, this is gonna be, this is gonna be great. So. Do not, I'm telling you guys, if you, you guys need to get your tickets now because it's going to sell out and then there's no standing room and you guys going to be trying to email us. How about, can we get in the door? It, no, <laughs> because of COVID with, you know, with limited restrictions, we have what we have. So, I, you know, a lot of times, you know, people like will say, oh, it's going to sell out just to try to get tickets. No, no, no. This is Anthony Browder. Okay. So I'm telling you guys, get your tickets now because you want to have your seat. We changed things around and we had to change the pricing, but um, there was um, a few of you guys had already bought tickets. Your tickets are still good. We will see you in the house. And yes, I see TI. Um, yeah, I'm going to see you in DC because you want to get a ticket for this event. Um, after this, Anthony's going to get on a plane and he's going to go to Egypt for the winter solstice. So this is, this is a, uh, this is going to be a huge event, and we want to make sure that you are in the house. If you are in the D.C., um, that little DMV area, if you're in there, even if you're not in the area, this is a this is a nice event for you to come down for, okay? It's going to be at the Miracle Theater in D.C. Make sure you get your tickets. You can go to any of our platforms, hit the um, link in our bio, go to our website. Yep, December 5th. Um, go to the um, link in our, um, our bio. 
and get your ticket. So that's uh, December 5th. Right after that, we're going to go to Atlanta. Now, we're going to be announcing things, you know, with these with these cities where, you know, really it's, it's going to be more than just a screening. OK, and uh, we use these times as community building times. But um, and to see you guys, you know, we haven't seen anybody in person <laughs> except for people in Detroit and um, and people uh, in Philly thus far. So it's really Super important if you are in these areas that you come out and support and you know so that you can uh, mingle with other black folks um, and just have a good time and learn a lot. So Anthony Browder, our happy screening in DC on December 5th um, at the Miracle Theater. And he will be talking about why now Valley civilization matters to people of African ancestry. All right. So make sure you get your tickets. Um, also, one more um, uh, quick announcement before we um, bring on our guests, because we're about to get our money and our family straight. Uh, this is going to be exciting, too. It's always exciting when we learn some stuff we don't know and when we can tell some people some stuff we learn and just move the move the uh, race forward. So it's going to be exciting conversation. Um, our One Africa Returning to the Source conference. We're down to 10 seats left. Okay. We only got 10 seats. This is so wild. You know, the last time that that this many, well, we're not bringing a thousand people to Egypt, but a thousand people came with Dr. Ben in 1987. Okay. This is 2022 that we will be returning to back to Kemet in large numbers. You want to be part of this conference. Now, you want to be part of this conference for a lot of reasons. You know, if you've never come to Egypt, it's a good time because you'll be around a lot of, um, you know, uh, a lot of uh, black folks. But also you're going to, you know, be you'll, you'll have a chance to have one on one time with all the scholars that are coming. Like this is monumental. A lot of these um, scholars that are, are coming have they haven't been together like all together since um, I think Anthony Browder had maybe a conference a couple years ago or maybe tens of years ago, ten, I mean, like a decade ago in DC. But, you know, a lot of these cats are getting together um, and haven't seen each other all in one place for a long, long time. And they're going to be talking about returning to the source, returning to the source. So we have, and I'm going to make sure I get everybody's, um, I'm not going to forget anybody's name this time. So we're doing this in conjunction with IKG, which is um, Anthony Browder's um, organization that he's had for over 40 years. And he celebrates that next year. So One Africa Returning to the Source Conference, only 10 seats left. All right. Um, we are going to have at this conference, it's a two-day conference in Aswan, Egypt, February 20th through the 28th. That's the date of the trip. Um, we have the um, the, the presenters will be Anthony Browder, Dr. Leonard and Dr. Rosalind Jeffries, Dr. Wade and Dr. Vera Nobles, Professor James Small, Dr. Bayina Bello, Dr. Theopil, uh, Theopil Omanga, um, Dr. Solange Ashby, Asar Imhotep, Infudishi Juhutimis, and I think that's it. I got everybody right there. This is going to be like fabulous and it's going to be hosted by Dr. Chika Akua. <laughs> like, it's like, what, what more can we get here? Okay. Um, yes, I see. Yep. Rashmel is like, I can't wait to be there. It's going to be great. So if you can make it happen, um, this could be your Kwanzaa gift to yourself. Um, and I, and listen, I'm not disillusioned about how much he's, you know, the, it costs to get to Egypt, but I will say that if you put it out there, the universe does always find a way to make you know, things that need to happen to you happen. So I'm just saying you want to, um, you know, make sure you get there. Yes, Nubia, this is historic. And um, you guys look at little Nubia because we're going to have something in the newsletter that Nubia is going to be um, offering our, our people, which is going to be great too. So I know I just said a lot, but thank, I want to thank everybody again. Oh, and I'm so, oh my gosh. So one other thing, I want to um, also just give a shout out to Dr. Boyce Watkins. So he had this huge um, all black national conference in Orlando. So normally Taki and I, we do the screenings together, but this time it was like on the same day. So he was in Orlando holding it down and I was in Philly holding it down, but he was, he was hobnobbing with everybody. Go to our social media page and see, everyone he was hanging out with. 
it was that um, uh, he saw Dr. Boyce Watkins and his lovely wife, um, Alicia, uh, Dr. Alicia Watkins. Uh, she was there in attendance. Riza uh, Islam was there. And, um, you know, we did an interview with Riza and Lord Jamar. So you can go see that on Happy Talks as well. TJ Lofton, Blue Pill. And we're going to be adding more pictures. So you know, make sure that's why you got to be tuned in to Hoppy so that you get all this little information. You get to see all you get to see everything first. Um, Jay Morrison was in the house. Um, it was just a uh, just a beautiful event. And also there was a brother who you got to see his artwork. If you go to our Instagram or Facebook page or Twitter, you can see Prince um, Eric Nichols. He has beautiful artwork. It's beautiful. But yeah, go check him out. You know, make sure you um, support the brother. But yes, um, you know, Taiki was in the house holding it down. He had a different hoppy shirt on every day out there stunting on these haters. I love it. I love it. I loved it. It was great. So, so yes. So please, you guys, make sure you are signed up to our newsletter because every month, like I said, we do, um, it's, it's just for our, our happy viewers. We have five articles. It's always a happy update. And then we have a financial one-on-one um, you kind of nuts and bolts article. And then uh, we talk about a financial innovator, someone from the past who has laid the foundation for us now, always supporting a black business is in there. And then we have a nice health article. So go to happyfilm.com. We can do all of that. While you're there, you can also get merchandise. You can donate if you want to, or you can donate to our cash app, which is dollar sign uh, happy, uh, happy Film. All right. So without further ado, this is, um, and let me tell you, this, this gentleman, <laughs> he is such, um, just, he, he's just a nice guy. We had contacted him uh, because we were looking, you know, for Hoppy, we needed to talk to um, you know a, a bank, uh, a black bank, you know owner, right? And we had one that we had already talked to, but something kind of happened with the footage, and we were having a hard time reconnecting. But we were able to make our way to uh, First Independence Bank, which is a black um, black owned bank in Detroit, Michigan. This 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 man was very gracious. <laughs> okay, I think we might have talked to him on a Monday, Wednesday. We were in Detroit. He gave us his time and uh, myself and um, Tuti Films, Robert Gay, shout out to Robert Gay. He, we came down there and he did this interview. He, he liked our project so much that he um, came on as a producer and then he had us come down to um, Alabama for Mardi Gras. Yeah, see, I didn't know. I don't know if y'all knew that Alabama actually had the first Mardi Gras, um, which was really cool. And he was like Grand Marshal. We showed our film. It was just really nice. Him and his wife are lovely, lovely people. So. If anybody else is going to talk about money, this is the man who needs to talk about money. And like in our film, we always say you can be a conscious person, but it's OK to be conscious and have money. <laughs> OK, that is how we push our people forward. So without further ado, I want to um, I want to introduce you to Mr. Kenneth Kelly. Hey, Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, you know, this is actually I was thinking about this is our second time. Um, that you've been on um, Happy Talks. It is, so, it's exciting to be here, exciting to be with your audience. I'm seeing some of the comments here and uh, great to see the engagement that's taking place. Oh yeah, absolutely. We got like one of the best audiences. I tell you guys are always on it. So yeah, shout out to our, our, um, our audience, Joelle, everyone's in here. So this is, you know, I remember when we sat down with you in Alabama and you were just kind of mentioned, oh, I'm writing a book. And I was like, well, okay, you know, what's your book about? And he was like, estate planning. I was like, yes, because, you know, it's so cool that, you know, more black folks are getting money, but it's like, it's even cooler when you can leave some money behind. And so I, it, every time we talk, I was like, oh, is your book done? <laughs> and so finally, yay, your book is done right here. Oh, thank you. you You're know, too kind. Yes. And you, okay. Now, happy viewers, you know how I love giving our books. So we got five of these. Okay. Five books. So you guys have to pay attention because we're going to ask, I'm going to ask, you know, at the end, I'm going to ask you guys something. First five people to hit us up at infohoppyfilm.com. There it is. And also people who um, won Dr. Um, uh, Dr. McKinney's book, it goes out on Saturday. So there it is. All right. So first, um, Mr. Kelly, just tell us like what you do. So I have the pleasure now of serving as the chairman and CEO of First Independence Bank. 
Uh, we're one of roughly 17 African-American owned and controlled banks in the country out of over 5,000 banks. And so we are very excited about what we do every day. We were one of the positive outcomes of the 1967 Detroit riots. And so as you think about what's going on with and what took place with George Floyd's mur murder, uh, a little bit over a year ago, we see some of the same trends and some of the same patterns continue to repeat themselves. Ironically, I'll share with your audience, it hasn't been made public yet, but we have been approved to open a branch. So we'll be the first African-American owned bank that will have a branch in Minneapolis and the St. Paul Twin City area. So we're excited about that, but we, we have not uh, acknowledged the actual date of opening yet, but that's some exciting news. I'm sure your audience would be, would love to know. Wow, that's what's up. Wow, so wait, wait. And you know, one thing you said that just stood out to me, you said there's 17 banks. So when we started filming Hoppy, there was 22. So now we're only down to 17? Yes, yeah, so you're keeping up with what's going on. And banks in general are consolidating. Um, it, it is a very challenging business to be candid with you. And so you're gonna continue to see, I think, a trend going down. You know, there used to be, I said 5,000 total. There used to be over 18,000 at one point, not very, very long ago. So every time you see a, a bank merger, remember that's two going into one. And so uh, you're gonna continue to see that. The, the, the financial space has been very challenged with the ability to be able to make money in this space that really should outrun what I would call your typical cost, your compliance cost, your technology cost, um, and be, be candid, your human capital, your, your labor cost now is pretty expensive. And so, as you know, many of us now bank online. So the branching system and network that used to be prevalent many years ago, or decades ago, is somewhat going away. But the reality is you still got to have some form of a presence to be kind of uh, to, to go to the old adage, be sure you're not out of sight and out of mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. So, OK, you guys are OK. That This is wow. That's really that's like super cool. <laughs> you know, I don't have any other word other than that's really cool. And you know, you also have, a, um, you do commercial lending as well? We do, we predominantly do commercial lending. Um, that's typically on hard assets, real estate. Uh, we do some residential lending and we also do some equipment leasing. So uh, we have been predominantly in hard asset lending, uh, meaning that you have some form of collateral to, to really pledge to the bank. We started looking at moving back into the auto space to help individuals kind of move in, into that 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 area of, of the economy. Uh, but as you know, it, it's hard to chase down your assets when those things get rolling on wheels and can end up in California or Miami or Boston. And so for a lot of banks, that has been a very, very um, challenging aspect. And it's one of the things that have made banks become more specialized. And so you'll see very unique banks that, that may do just auto lending because they're really good at it or may do just uh, a specific type of commercial lending because they're really good at it or franchise lending, et cetera. So uh, we have had to follow suit. And that's one reason I just talked about those three areas that we have tried to focus on. So you could be hopefully good at okay. one thing and not be um, weak yeah. across the board trying to do too many. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, if someone's asking, is there any connections in, in Detroit? Yeah, that's where your your bank is based in Detroit. Yeah, the you bank is based, the base the bank is based in Detroit. Yeah, that's what's up. So, all right, so let's just get to it. So, why did you decide to write this book? <laughs> like, why? Like, so, go to the state. So, Felicia, this, this is a great question, and I will tell you, and I, I hope the audience really engage in this because we can't go around talking about wealth or talking about things such as reparations if we're not taking care of what we have. And we know today, and I mean, even in your promo coming on, you know, African-Americans in this country, if you took just the economic power would be one of the largest countries in the world economically. But what we have found is that we have 66% of African-Americans walking around without a will. Uh, what does that mean? That means you basically become a ward of the state. And I'm going to say it very plain and simply so you can really kind of understand what it what it really means. And so if you've worked all your life to have a house or just a car and it doesn't have to be expensive, it could be thirty thousand dollars or forty thousand um, dollars. If you pass away without a will, you become a ward of the state. And that means a judge you do not know 
gets to choose one of his friends that you likely will not know who will decide how your affairs will be handled. And when they do that, you know, they do that in their own best interest most of the time. And so let me give you one example. And and this one's in the book, but it's not in its totality because we finished the book before this this, this chapter played out. Uh, James Brown, who we all respect and love, and I don't, let me be clear, I'm not using any of these individuals to say that they were bad people because they were excellent at what they do. The fact that we know their name says something about them. So let me be real clear about that. But what I also know that is we get to learn lessons from others in life by what things happen, by the way things take place. And so I want you to know that everything that's in our book is not disparaging upon any one individual. It is just to tell a story to prove a point. And so, as we know, James Brown died in December of 2006, almost 15 years ago. His estate and affairs were just settled uh, just a couple of months ago. Uh, what does that mean? That means that there were 20, uh, there were 12 lawsuits involved with settling his estate. What does that mean? That means that there were representation from 24 different attorneys at some point in time sitting at what I call the feast of James Brown meaning that there were attorneys he didn't know who basically build his estate to make money to to do things such as pay for lake houses tuition and uh, maybe inheritance for their kids um, at the expense of james brown's family and so it's very important to understand the need to have a will so the, the point i'm making is 66 percent of african americans in this country today do not have a will and so as I started thinking about, well, we talk about a wealth gap, we talk about whites have more than blacks, but the reality is if we don't take care of what we have, guess what? That's our fault. And so I wanted to be really a beacon of hope, hopefully talking about this topic and driving home the point that you can do this. It's not that hard. We all have to deal with our mortality. The reality is I haven't seen one person today who's proven they're not going to leave here. So it's not a if something bad happens, it is a when it happens. And so I just really want to come pretty straight forth and blunt on this issue because we have to become very comfortable with our own mortality. In my writing of the book, it was a challenge for me and I'll just tell you. And so that doesn't mean my, my affairs are perfect either. I'll just tell you that. But the point is, until we start talking about it and dealing with it in a very mature way, we certainly going to have cases like the ones that I just mentioned a moment ago. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? A lot of times I remember when my parents, um, I remember my dad wanted to talk to my mom about the, about a will. And she was like, I just don't want to, I don't want to talk about, I don't want to talk about it. You know, because it's like, if you, you think that if you're going to talk about, about it, you're going to like die tomorrow. <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, and, and I, mean, I was right. a kid. I was just like, you know, I was a kid and I was like, I just don't want neither one of my parents to die. So I'm just like, I'm sad too. You well, know, and I'm just thinking all because my dad was like, we, you know, we got to get, have some stuff in place. Um, and coincidentally he passed away and his, he had everything just laid out. I, we, everything was just laid out. We knew what to do. He had all the documents in place. He had everything, you know, all put together, um, you know, so it wasn't, you know, we, we had a chance to just, you know, grieve and not, you know, be figuring out how things are going to get paid and, and, you know, just where things go. So it's, it's really important to do this. So what exactly is estate planning? Well, th this goes back to some terminology that really goes across the big pond back into uh, Europe, Rome and, and England, where they uh, basically you had to have at that point in time. It goes all the way back to the sixth century. That tells you how long this has been a topic and how we have not been able to deal with it. That the discussion was you had to have some form of a, a, a will, which was oral and in some form written that was really approved by someone to say that that was your last testament. And so that legacy kind of transferred into America. And it is one way that we can decide and share how our property uh, will be dispersed upon our death, not when, not if, but when. So that, that, that process has been in place. Every state has its own legal, let me use the word entanglements and, and what that means and what secures it being a proper will or not. And that leads to the question, because I do want to address a couple of the comments here. Becky, let me say I'm proud of you for saying you do not have a will yet. That means you're going to be in the process of getting one done. 
Um, yes. and, and, and I think Nubia says, uh, or asked the question, explain the process of doing a will. It, it is very simple. Basically, it allows you to identify who you are by name. Uh, it allows you to identify who you want to be beneficiaries of your affairs. That could be any property you have. Most people think cash or stocks or houses or cars, but all things that you have and own that you believe is of value should be and could be included in your will. Uh, such as, you know, if you have a favorite frying skillet, um, there may be a descendant in the family that wants that frying skillet. If you have a favorite mm -hmm. mirror or a favorite painting, uh, those are all things that sometimes we take for granted because we've had them so long, but who knows, it may be the next Picasso. So uh, taking the time to do that, uh, jewelry that you have um, can be willed. There, there's every, anything that you own as personal property can be actually included in your will and you can clearly state who you would like to have it. Or if you want to donate it to charity, you could do that also. Uh, but the point is, most of us a lot of times kind of take for granted all of the things that we have and see it, quote, as as junk. But what you do know is that there are individuals who go around scavenging um, those little rental um, storage facilities. They scavenge estates and basically turn around, put it on eBay and they make a living off of it because, yep. you know, one man's trash can be another man or woman's treasure. And so I will ask you to probably not you know, sh give shortcome your own thoughts about the things that you own because their dresses, whether they're dresses from whenever prom or weddings or different events mm -hmm. that someone may still see as valuable, even though it may not mean a lot to you. So those, all of those yes, things can be included in there. Um, the, the process, you know, again, let me share something real quickly because it's, it's in the book, but I also want you, all your listeners to know this. We we went beyond just writing a book because I think anyone can can do that, to be candid with you. We took this a step further and said, I want to create a platform that can change people's lives mm -hmm. to go see an attorney and to have a will done. You know, they may ask you five hundred dollars just to even set up the appointment and come see them. And in some cases, it may be a thousand. What I wanted to do was to, to democratize that and hit everyday working families right where they are and be able to make this affordable for them. We created a technology platform, it's called mylegacyitems.com. And I wanted you to think about that. So when you say it, it pops up, my legacy items, because these are all part of your legacy, everything you've done and, and what you've acquired is a part of your legacy, uh, dot yes. com. And for the mere amount of 49.95, you can have a will, a healthcare directive, and a power of attorney done all sitting right there at your computer doing it yourself. It will give you instructions depending on which state you're in of what you need to do to be sure that that's a legal document, so to speak. Now, I will tell you what is on the, the disclaimer that you're going to read is say we're not a legal entity. And that is a true statement. And we have to identify that disclaimer. But the point is, you could take that document. And if you follow the instructions inside of your state, it can become a document that's worth your while. And if you don't, if that doesn't give you satisfaction, what it also does, though, it allows you to save because when you go to the attorney, you can tell him, I already have a will. I just want you to read yep. over and be sure it's properly notarized and documented. Now, let me tell Absolutely. you what's really important about why we created this platform. And if any mm -hmm. of you have had to deal with death, you, you will know this journey, which is let me find all of the papers. Let me find all of the bank accounts. Let me wait for the mail to come to figure out where there were some other things that have taken place. And every family has had to do that. With this platform, what we've done is created a place where everything will be in one place. So upon your demise, someone can go there. They can see everything that you've ever put in there and done. You can upload deeds to houses or leases to apartments or um, all of your checking accounts. And it, it's just as safe as any of the other financial technologies where you would basically kind of do and work over mobile banking. You can also, again, on the deed or the location of your house, you put in your street address, just like Zillow, it will pop up and show you the value of that today. So you could really determine, well, what is my estate worth? Um, you put all those things in there and it basically will tell you what it is, including um, your life insurance. So you can upload all of that so that someone can be able to go and know where to go to to cash that in. So we created that for $49.95 per year to make it affordable for anyone to be able to take care of their affairs. 
wow, you know what? So I think we should give one away of those. Okay, <laughs> little happy money. We got three more cities to go, but I think we um, uh, can. We want to give one um, of the um, of the legacy items, my legacy items um, membership for one year away, and five books. You guys, That's awesome. this is yeah. This like this is this is what it's about right here. This is practical information. Everybody can do this. Every single person can do this right now. You know, and if you can't do this, you can at least do this on payday. Okay. Um, and when, it, when you were talking, one of the things I was thinking about was that, you know, sometimes like people like in the, in your own family will fight over stuff. Like I know, um, like in our family, we have records, like vinyl records. It's like a hot commodity and everybody knows who gets what. <laughs> and so there's no little fighting cause it's already written down somewhere, you know, um, you know, that that's going to happen, but I can see how, uh, you know, when someone passes away, it just seems like there's you know, there's already tension. And if you start fighting over just things, how something like, you know, my legacy items could just really, you know, cut, cut all that stuff down. You know, and, and that's another irony culturally we have faced, which is being willing to kind of deal with things as we need to. And I will tell you what you just brought up has torn up a lot of families where people won't even speak mm -hmm. anymore because of things that to them, it may not be very valuable in terms of monetary dollar wise, but to them, it's the sentimental value sometimes. And it's enough to kind of tear up a, a family. Uh, I tell one of the stories in the book. I won't get into the details because I think you all should read the book, not for my sake, but for your own personal yeah. benefit and your loved ones. But I tell a story in, in my book about that journey and how it can impact the family. Now for the, my story was very, very light. It was not even a big deal to be candid with you, but it just goes to illustrate in that time or in that moment when to be candid with you. And that could be a year after or six months or two years after you, 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 you're in a different state of mind in the midst of death, depending on your loved one. And so yeah. there are times you're going to probably be emotional about things that you shouldn't be just because your, your senses are heightened. And, and what we want you to do is to try to dull that down. I'll give you another example of, of why this planning is important. I've talked to funeral home directors and there's some of that in the book too, but the reality is when you're in that emotional state of trying to plan a funeral in the midst of that week, um, you will be weak, W-E-A-K. And, and you will get things if you have the money that you probably shouldn't buy, you will probably buy. Like, you know, the casket that will be waterproof and nothing can ever get in it because you your loved one is a loved one. And guess what? They're still going in a vault. And guess what? It's highly unlikely you're going to ever go see them in that vault again. But the reality is the funeral homes in some cases do sell you and upgrade you um, because you're kind of in an emotional state. And so you need to know that. And, and my point is, even in writing the book, I went to a funeral home as part of my research because I wanted to be there and do it when I was not under an emotional state. And so mm. the point is, I think all of us could benefit through this planning process and we could alleviate some of the tension that may be left behind family members. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so so this uh, my legacy item starts you know, to help you to get all the documents together. And um, and you talked about a little bit about what those documents are. You know, you want to have a will um, you're now. Yeah. Somebody, I think somebody in the in the, in the uh, chat said life insurance, but can and you talked a little bit about life insurance in Hoppy. Can you talk about yeah. the importance or not? Of yeah, insurance? let me hit a couple more of the products in my legacy items, and then I'll get okay. to life insurance. So, okay. um, there are what two other important. I'm sorry, Felicia. You got more stuff in my legacy. I mean, the stuff you said. I'm just like, oh my god. No, this no, is no. Crazy. So, so well, I want to. I want to drive a couple of points home. One is okay. this idea of a um, healthcare directive. Um, yeah. Some of it would call it, you know, medical directive, or um, you know, if you let's just use examples of when you would have to use that, or when it may be incumbent upon you having it. Uh, when you go to a doctor and if you're going to go up under any procedure, they're going to ask you, you know, do you have a, a living will? It's also called a living will, which means if if I'm incapacitated in this process, you know, who has the authority to make a decision regarding recitation or et cetera? Or if I want to be recitated, 
all of that is kind of in this healthcare directive slash living will. That is extremely important because once a child becomes 18 years old, and I'm gonna raise my hand, I have it under one, but not the other yet. Um, when they become 18 years old, if they are in a car accident and they're incapacitated, it is very likely, even as a parent, and you can be paying their tuition, they can be living at home and you can file them on your taxes. But the reality is uh, you may not get to make the decision of what should be done with them if they're incapacitated. A health care directive slash living will will allow for that their wishes to be taken out or give you as a parent the authority to make that decision. A lot of people don't know that, but the reality is that's one that I tell you, I, I think it could be um, devastating to deal with that state, but also to deal with the idea that you won't have the ability to make that decision. So I'm going to be clear. I'm still I'm not. I'm halfway done on that. But the point is, I want you to know that. And that's that's uh, incredibly important. Um, the other one is just the power of attorney to, to be sure that if you're not in the, the, the vicinity to act on your behalf while you're still alive, someone else can. One of the examples in the book regarding these issues was John Singleton. It's probably not a vote, not a, uh, anyone on this call who does not recognize John Singleton. He was our coming of age, the director of Boys in the Hood. Well, John passed away uh, a few years ago, I guess it's been now. But when he was incapacitated, there was a fight between, I believe it was his girlfriend and his mom over what to do with him. And neither one had the, quote, technical responsibility for. So they had to go to court to deal with that while he's in the hospital. And then, oh, you know, goodness. beyond that, I think he did have a will, but it was very outdated and it covered, I think, his first child but it was so long ago that it didn't cover other aspects of his life that had changed over time. And again, let me be clear, that's not disparaging upon John Singleton. I'm just telling you, these are real life issues that we all have to deal with. Love him, still watch Boys in the Hood because of the impact it had on us as kids or, or coming of age. But the point I'm making is I think all of us would not want our families in those positions where someone else is making the, the decision on their behalf. So I want to talk about that. Let me skip to life insurance. Life insurance is one of those that basically uh, should be to protect your loved ones in the midst of your absence. Um, so once you become of age and you're, you're working, think of what's your salary. Let's just say your salary is $50,000. You know, what does it take to replace you financially for your family? Um, mm -hmm. you have to think of what, what is that amount that I need that could replace the $50,000 and it, to be candid, it's not 50,000 that'll get you through one year. You need some value of insurance that will at least sustain the family over some period of time. If it, if you're not capable of affording for them to be, you know, um, uh, financially secure forever. So life insurance serves that purpose. I will tell anyone who is young. And when I say young, that means, uh, of the age of maybe 40 and below or 45 and below to look at getting some term life insurance. Now, term life is truly rentals, renters insurance. It means that you're not buying a whole life policy, you're renting it, which means you hope to change your condition by the time the rental period is over 10 years or 20 years, such that it may not be needed. Now, to be candid, you can layer that over time. You can get a policy when you're 30. Your income changes typically by 40. So you may want to get an additional policy by 40 so you can stagger those. But at some point in time, you'll say, OK, when I'm 60, I can't afford term insurance because it's extremely expensive. But the point is, hopefully you built your assets up in a way that you may not need it. But the point I'm trying to make is life insurance is a vital component to um, your family. And, and, and in any case, just taking care of services for you if you are single. Um, we just saw, uh, again, another fame actor, uh, A.J. Johnson, Ezel in Friday. Um, I believe you saw his wife out making an appeal with a GoFundMe just to bury him. Um, you know, again, this is not uh, just I want to be real clear. This is not to, to say anything bad about him as an individual. It is just to say, here's another learning example of do we want to leave that as part of our legacy in terms of things when, not if, they happen to take place. So uh, life insurance, I think, is vital, and, and all of us should look at ways to get it. Depending on where you work, sometimes there's an opportunity to be able to buy it at a very affordable rate. You should certainly take that that down also. 
So now, is there a difference between, because I just got um, like a difference between like whole life and um, and term life. Like I just got insurance on my, my kids, but I got them whole life policies. Like, is there any, um, you know, benefit to doing one up over the other? Yeah, well, see, whole life gives you a chance to, over time, build a residual value. It, it will cost you a little bit more, but it also costs you if you ever have to cash it out. Um, and so, you know, from my perspective, my, my view was to try to rent the insurance, meaning not pay as much to the insurance company with the intent of giving me the coverage that I need, but hopefully be secured that I may not need it at some point in time in the future. In some cases, you can convert term to whole and vice versa. You have to check with your insurance agent on that. But for me, um, at a young age, I made more of a decision to go ahead and do term life as my as a process for, for us and our family. Yeah. Um, yes, and we have uh, one of our uh, happy extended family, uh, jo uh, Joel, um, Sullivan. I think that's how, that's how you say his last name, but he's a financial um, guru, actually. He's going to be doing some um, articles and stuff for us for for the um, newsletter, but he is also going to give us more information about life insurance, you know, so that we can just keep the family right here. We got everything you guys need, but this, my, my legacy items is wonderful. This is such a good idea, <laughs> Mr. Kelly. Um, all right. So in this, so now we have our will, and um, our health proxy or living will, our power of attorney. And the power of attorney is, you know, what what's the difference between the power of attorney and like, if you already have a will, like what's the power of attorney? Yeah, yeah. So, so the power of attorney actually operates while you're still alive. And what it does is, is it allows someone to go and act on your behalf. So let's just say you're in the hospital and you know, you can't go to the bank to take care of your affairs. Power of attorney okay. allows someone to act on your behalf. And, and we do use a lot. There are quite a few times that you you probably have used the power of attorney and may not have known it. Uh, let's just say if you buy real estate, a lot of times yeah. when you're there, if you're not there at the closing with everyone at the same time, you probably sign over a power of attorney that will allow them when it's time to close, they close on your behalf as if you are there. So it, yeah. it just gives someone the authority. And a lot of times there's a limited power of attorney, meaning that I'm signing this to say, I want you to only do this because I don't trust you to do that. Uh, so you, you have a power of attorney that allow for individuals to act on your behalf uh, while you're still alive. Now, when you when you're deceased, I'm pretty certain that that power of attorney is no longer effective. Okay. Because at that point in time, you're really into now a will um, or trust or whatever that may be. So let me say thank you. I see David says he's retired. He has a will. Uh, by a law firm and whole life insurance. Congratulations. Thank you for sharing that. We need more individuals like David Williams out there. And, and to be candid, David, we need you out there talking about you have done that because it's yes. taboo in our society to even talk about this topic. And it's problematic for us because we have to deal with it with the tragedy in silence a lot of times because we're too embarrassed to have and ask for help. Yeah. And then, you know, you're going to have somebody in your house rummaging through your stuff, buying it, like you said, you know, or people fighting over it, you know, or losing the house that you've worked, you know, so many years to get and live in. And now somebody else gentrification is sitting up in your house. So it's important. And even if yes. you, you know, like I love what you said in the beginning, even if you don't think you have anything, you have stuff like we have things. We have beautiful things. We have things that we treasure, you know, um, and even if we don't treasure it, like you said, someone else may treasure it, but we need to start leaving these things, you know, in our family so that they can, um, uh, you know, just be handed down and handed down and handed down. Yeah. So let me, let right. me answer one of the questions here. Someone, Kalilia, Kalilia I believe it's. Yes, how much Baker. amount? Yeah. Um, yeah. She asked what, what amount of coverage you suggest. You know, it, it depends on your expenses at this point in time and where you are in life. But I would tell you, Let's just say if your salary is twenty five thousand, you know, you may want to stretch for a hundred thousand or two hundred and fifty thousand dollar policy. Uh, typically, I would say look at a policy that would be about 10 times what you think your salary uh, would be if you can afford that. So if you have a hundred thousand dollar salary, maybe that's a million. If it's fifty thousand, maybe it's five hundred thousand. Or if you can't afford that at this point in time, cut that in half. 
But the point is you, you think about the reality of what that can do for a family. So if you had, let's just say your, your salary is $50,000 and, you know, a $250,000 uh, life insurance policy, one, you can be buried. Um, number two, you can probably put back enough for your kids to have, if you have kids, to be able to go to college. Um, or worst case, the family will have some sense of, of stability for a period of time. And, and, and those are the things that I think that's really important so that they're not worried about, you know, do we have to sell the house? Do we have to downsize? Is our life going to be just completely upside down um, upon that demise? So um, that those are numbers that I would just say it, consider. But again, it, it has to depend on your budget and your other commitments um, to be reasonable. Yeah. OK, so, so Felicia, um, I don't know how much time we have, but there, there's one point I, I really want to drive home here. Right. And if, if there are any couples on here, um, your relationship may not be the same after tonight and what we're about to talk about. <laughs> but let me just let me put it in, in terms of uh, and particularly those who may be in a second marriage or a second relationship. Uh, it is vitally important that you deal with some of these issues. Uh, we have seen. We have seen where um, instances where someone has worked all their life, uh, has a pension, been married for, say, 20, 30 years, and a first wife's name could still be on paperwork. And, you know, the individual passes away and the pension is completely wiped away uh, because the first wife was on the pension, meaning that the first wife, if she's still alive, will get the pension. Um, or cases where the, you know, the, the first wife is deceased and the second wife is the wife and has been for a long period of time. And, you know, the person passes away and their, their name is not on the, the paperwork. And um, again, the pension that this person has worked all their life for gets to go back into the pot. And sometimes that could be whatever, a thousand dollars, it could be two thousand dollars, whatever that per month. So you just these are things that I, I think. You know, I just want to share with the audience to to not take this lightly. It can impact your future and certainly impact your loved one's future, um, especially when you look at, I would call it mixed families. It gets extremely complicated and, and definitely a lot of taboo because, you know, you see that as, oh, that's my business and, and that's not your business. But at the end of the day, it will be someone's business when, not if. Mm. I like that. When, not if. That's just like, um, I can't think of his name. He's doing this commercial about, um, you know, if your car breaks down. And he was like, it's not when your car breaks down. And it's not if your car breaks down. It's when your car breaks down. And I kept thinking about that. That is so true. It's going to happen. You know, so our, you know, demise, your word, <laughs> you use that in, in Hoppy as well. Um, you know, when you're an ancestor, I mean, everyone's going to be an ancestor at, at some point. So we got to take care of these things for the people who are left here, um, you know, um, that are left here. So, you know, just to talk a little bit, uh, I have a, another question about the couples piece. So what, you know, um, I was listening to um, this sister talk about a state wealth, I mean, a, a state building. And she was talking about sometimes, you know, like in our, our um, in our culture, we don't always get divorced. Right. And we just you know, end up, you know, just kind of hanging out with somebody else. But how how those things really need to be put in place, you know, all these documents that you're talking about, because at the end of the day, if there's not anything written down, then it's the first person, even though, you know, the, you know, they may not be living together anymore and he may have a whole nother family or she may have a whole other family, some other place. At the end of the day, if nothing's written down, then it, it kind of defaults back to the first person. Yes, and you, you can see in the chat, I think Becky Brown um, really did an amen on what we just talked mm. about, um, saying divorce papers were not signed off by the judge. So the ex was able to gain the husband income after their mm. transition. Um, and, and those things happen. It, it's just reality. Like you said, it, in, in very plain cultural speak, you were just hanging out with someone else. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there can be a a devastating impact that really can bruise some hearts and and minds in the in the midst of that transition. Yeah, 
Yeah, and kids. I mean, I could see how this could just be a lot. So, you know, even if it's, you know, this is great, you know, that you have everything laid out in the, um, in this, um, my legacy items. And so, you know, family, if you, you know, we're not asking you to do all this stuff in one day, but even if you just picked one and did it one a week, okay, <laughs> you know, in two months, you may have everything that you need, you know, to just feel secure, you know, when you pass away. And it's, and it's all, like you said, housed in one place. Um, you give the password, you know, to whoever, you know, you want to give the passwords um, to. But, you know, this is a, a really a, a good place to kind of keep things together. Um, I got a, a couple more questions for you. I'm just going to take a little quick little commercial thing. Sure. A break. Everyone, um, please, um, you know, we, Taki and I have said this uh, countless times, is that Happy Talks is not free, <laughs> okay? Um, I mean, it's free to you guys when you're watching it, but there's a couple things we need from you. Now, this is something everybody can do. Just go and like this video and share the video. This is so important to share this video because this is just straight up nuts and bolts. This is what you do. Go here, mylegacyitems.com. You do this, this, and that. This is a good video for people. Now, I'm going to suggest, and I don't, I don't think that, you know, before when we tell you guys to share these videos, we're like, share the videos, share the videos. I'm going to say share the videos and then check back with whoever you shared it with, like in two weeks, because it's really important that we actually do these things. Okay, you know, um, a lot of uh, what um, Mr. Kelly is talking about, we, you know, we see it playing out, you know, on TV with some of these celebrities, but the reality is that it's happening to everyday people all the time. Okay, all the time. Everyone on this chat knows somebody who has, um, you know, to just, you know, they couldn't bury somebody. They had to do the, you know, get, you know, get this money, put this money together. Somebody fighting over, you know, material things. You know, a child doesn't get something like it's it's always something. So this is a good way for us to change the trajectory and to start keeping this wealth in our in our communities. It's one point two trillion dollars that we're talking about needs to be kept in our community. And this is a way. Um, so um, please, you know, you guys um, like and share this video, share it with at least three people and check back with them in two weeks. Also, um, if you want to donate to um, to the Happy Movement, please um, do so. There's our little um, our uh, I'm gonna put up our our cash app is right there. Um, happy Film dollar sign Happy Film. You can also go to our website happyfilm.com um, and uh, we have a a link for um, to donate. Also, if you are on YouTube, you can use the super chat and just donate right there. Uh, but it's really important that, you know, when you guys give us money, you see like this is a per this is a perfect example. When we get, um, you know, uh, uh, donations from you guys, we're able to do uh, to actually pay our, you know, a couple of people that we have working for us. But we also are able to like when people come on, we able to buy their um, their products because we you know, we're not like we don't ask people, oh, just give it to us so we can give it away. No, 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 because that's not how, you know, we are. Uh, that's not that's not a way that we can build wealth right it's you know mr kelly has spent his time and money to make a whole book a whole website just for us and we're not gonna be like oh just give us a couple of little copies no 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 so we like to pay full price for our things so that um it's a way that you know it's just the way how we do in business is reciprocity so it's really important guys if you you know if you like what you're seeing with our happy talks and a lot of people like our happy talks is that you donate and you know yes. we take anything we're not yeah and listen we're not um like oh we gotta have this certain amount oh no 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 we take whatever you have <laughs> you know five dollars five hundred whatever <laughs> we're we're very um grateful and we always you know at um we try when i say try because it might be one or two times that we've had to spend the money outside our community only because we couldn't find a service within our community but we keep it in the community so it's important that um that you guys please um you know like and share this video and donate if you possibly can um well, and i would tell you i just um would like to say you know if you all go to the my legacy items and you do i would ask that you put in there uh happy um, as it'll say a coupon code, put happy in there and I'll make a donation back to happy for each of those that are bought through my legacy items where you put happy in the, in the coupon code. What I would also offer to you 
is that all all of you individuals who would forward it on to your family members and follow what Felicia just said, which is check up on them in a couple of weeks. Just have them to put your email name in the coupon code and, and we'll uh, have a prize for you, too, because we believe exactly what she just described. This is not going to happen unless people um, who love them stress the importance of them doing this. It's not going to happen just because I have this conversation with you because you probably don't know me well enough to say, you know what? I was inspired to go change my life for someone else. It, it's just not going to happen. It's going to happen because of relationships. And so in hearing testimonies like David Williams and some others uh, in here who have described situations where now this is you, 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 you feel and sense the realism of how close this hits you. So would love to have you. Let's make this a movement because we can change our culture by dealing with this issue alone. African-Americans used to own 10 million acres of property in this country. 10 million. Um, that number is down to about two now. A lot of that land has been lost because of lack of wills and it become air property where it gets locked up. And then there are cousins who can't agree and disagree and then they get mad and won't pay the taxes. And then it goes into um, a tax process where someone else comes in and buy it. Um, but unfortunately, you know, we have to raise our hand and say that's our fault. And so what I'm suggesting to you is we now know better. So now let's do better. Mm -hmm. And um, guys, I put in the chat the um, the link for the book directly um, right there. You can get it from Amazon before before I let go. OK, Pre yep. Prepared before I let go. Kenneth Kelly. This is this is really good. Um, so I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about trusts because, you know, um, I saw someone in there ask about trust. Like, what is a trust and who should use a trust? or have a trust. Yeah, a, a trust is a, a little bit more of a complicated process um, that that individuals can go through when they have what I would consider maybe a sizable amount of property. You don't have to have a sizable amount of property to be candid. When I say property, I'm talking about all things you own. That's cash and cars and house, etc. You don't have to have that to set up a trust. But a trust is almost like a a living business that you have decided to put your things into that upon your passing doesn't have to go to probate, doesn't have to be shown or, or go into the court system. Uh, typically a will uh, would have to be probated. Uh, so, you know, that that's identified, but when you put it in a trust, it creates a little bit more protection so that individuals may not get to know exactly what you left behind for your beneficiaries and loved ones. So. Uh, a trust is another vehicle that that individuals have used. And, and and even when they're still living, they'll create a living trust, which, again, goes on into really into perpetuity if, if someone is managing and handling the affairs of that trust. So as I just talked about, a lot of land that we have seen lost by African-Americans could have very easily been put in a trust. The problem is you have to figure out how to fund that trust so it can be perpetual and self-sustained. And so. Um, a trust is another vehicle, again, I would suggest that you look at and, and see if it works for you and your family and, and basically a way to, to pass property in many cases that mitigate some of the taxes. So let me put it in very simple terms. Uh, if you're talking about someone extremely wealthy, uh, you're likely to find they're going to have some form of a trust involved in their estate planning process. Uh, and, and like I said, a lot of times it has to do with tax planning, et cetera. Now, let me raise my hand and disclaimer, I'm not a tax accountant, so I can't give you advice and I don't, I don't have the authority to even say that's the way you should do your affairs or manage your affairs. But I'm suggesting at a very high level, I do know that individuals have set up trust in, me in mechanisms in a way to be able to, to take care of their affairs without having to, um, to mitigate taxes and, and to mitigate really the transparency of what their affairs entail. Okay. Um, someone asked, um, again, what was the name of the book? It's called Prepared Before I Let Go. And and this is uh, Ken Kelly and his family, because like I said, you, you were Grand Marshal of Mardi Gras, and, um, and this is right before COVID. 
oh my god we had a good time before covid <laughs> we did we did yeah. thank you for coming down that that was a great moment and uh, i'll tell you a little bit about the history even on that cover there uh the gentleman shot that the night of the grand marshal's ball and um what was very unique about that and i had it done uh, really to deal with this issue we talked about earlier if you if you notice uh, we're all looking over the camera so it's almost like we're looking into the future but what is also interesting is that you'll see that I'm in black and white, I'm not in color, to acknowledge that there's a point in time, not if, but when, uh, if the natural progression of age and time, you know, I, I will probably leave before my family. So I, I purposefully did that because it was one of those I wanted to connote, we have to become comfortable talking about this topic and know that you know that's a reality we need to deal with and so that was purposeful and i wanted to just share that with you in the audience yeah that's oh that's i um, you know i never noticed that wow okay well, that's what's up <laughs> you know I, I didn't notice that you were in black and white i just know i was like oh that's a picture from from mardi gras yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm in black and white we started to to to, to make it look more speckled, but that was getting a little too too gory is the word that I would use. So we just decided to do black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Um, I we want to thank Vicki Pope for her, uh, her uh, donation. Um, thank you, uh, Vicki. And let me put this back up, my legacy, because this is it's really important right there, mylegacyitems.com. Um, okay. Well, you know, I think that you, I, I think you've actually answered everything I needed to know. <laughs> and, I, and, and let me see, are there any questions in the chat? Um, anything that you guys, um, you know, any pressing questions that you, you want to know? Because this is, wow, this is really, this is, this is pretty powerful. This is a game changer because once we can start keeping, you know, the money in, in our, um, you know, like with us and the other piece, you know, I, I was thinking about when you were talking about life insurance is that, you know, you know, when you pass away and you're able to leave your family, you know, like a lump sum of money, if if you've also, you know, left with them um, some uh, like this financial responsibility or financial information or education that, you know, this can really help someone, you know, it can help your family not only maintain wealth but get wealth you, you know what i'm saying you know um you know if, if they know what to do with the money they just like just don't you know take it all and spend it all you know quickly but if they actually invest it or you know put it in other vehicles that this could you know um this could be a game changer for a family because now they're going to have life insurance for themselves as well and they're going to be able to leave their you know their kids something and then they're going to teach their kids how to take care of money and then their kids are going to have life insurance to leave there you know so this is really a way that we can um you know just maintain and um and create generational wealth absolutely and these vehicles are used by others often and they sound as you said you know kind of harsh but uh, there are a lot of cases where families have paid insurance policies on grandparents knowing that you know that time is going to come with the intent of it will benefit the the grandchildren uh we we've seen that in case after case and it's it's a business decision i mean it's not a you know again it, it's not a if it's a win and so they've taken advantage of that uh, we saw and i write about in the book the story of master p you know he got his start from roughly ten fifteen thousand dollars that came from the loss of his his grandfather there's different stories about what that meant but the reality is he, he had enough seed money to now become one of the, the biggest names in entertainment. And so, you know, to your point, these sound like small dollars, but they could be life changing for families. Absolutely. Yes. I keep thinking about the ra uh, raising in the sun. You know, the you know, with you know, with, with the little money, he got some money, lump sum of money, you know, and um, you know, this could definitely, it, it's, it's a game changer, guys. MyLegacyItems.com, please go on there. Um, oh, and yes, wait, we have to give out um, some stuff. All right, so we have we have two things that we're giving away, okay? One is a membership for one year at MyLegacyItems.com for a lucky person, and we're giving away five 
prepared before I let go books um, that Ken Kelly, Kenneth Kelly, who is also a hobby producer, um, has written about estate uh, planning and wealth uh, build, uh, excuse me, generational wealth or well, estate planning. Okay, so let me, um, I'm gonna put up the email address that you guys need to send in, um, send this to uh, right here. It's our info hoppy, um, hoppy film at Gmail. So if you guys can just name at least um, four things that you need in, um, no, three things, three things that you need, uh, you know, to be, um, I'm trying to think about how can I say this? You need, you need at least three different documents, name three different documents that everybody should have in terms of their, um, uh, their legacy items, like all put together. So there's three documents that you need. Does that make sense? Mr. Kelly, does that make sense? We need three documents to be able to, um, you know, make sure our family's okay and make sure that we're okay if something happens to us or we're yes, you, you got it. You stay. Yep. Yep. Name three. The first five people who name three um, uh, things that email me, you get a copy of the book. Now, okay. So what should? How should we? You should come up with a question. I, I feel like you can come up with a better question for the um, for the membership. For the membership? Yep. Oh, okay. Hmm. You put me on the spot. Let me think about that for just a moment. Okay. And while you're thinking about that, I'm just going to tell everybody what you said about the My Legacy. So when you guys go on to mylegacyitems.com and, um, you know, if you don't, you know, win the membership, um, make sure that if you purchase it, that you put in Hoppy. Um, and when you put in Hoppy, when you're purchasing it, then uh, Mr. Kelly will make a donation back to us, which is really super cool. And you guys are going to send that email. Um, you're going to send this this video, uh, this Happy Talks out to people, and you're going to tell them that when they, you know, because you're going to check in on them. You're not going to just send it. You're going to send it and check in on them like two weeks. Say, look, did you look at the video? You know, and if they go into my legacy items, make sure they put your email in there. Um, so that, uh, you know, Ken knows, you know, what's, you know, who's, who's who and with our, our happy people. Okay. So it's very, very super duper important, you guys, to share and like this video and just, um, and you know, and I, I misspoke. It's not Vicky, it's Vicker, Vicker Pope for, um, giving us, um, the cash app. Thank you very much. Um, and, uh, Billy, thank you, Billy Dantzler. Thank you for your um, donation. This goes a lot. Okay, now Omeka, why are you up here? Right I, I, I have my question here? now. You gotta, you gotta uh, send it to the do the um, do infohoppy.com. Okay, go ahead. Your question, and guys, this is the question. If you, the first person to email us with the answer to infohoppyfilm.com, you get one year of the My Legacy Items membership. Okay, so you that's a that's cool. You can put all your stuff in there, you are ready to go. All right, go ahead, Mr. Kelly. Uh yes. Uh here's what I'd like to know. Uh someone needs to email uh, the actual price, because part of understanding finance is understanding how much money, how much things cost, the price of my legacy items per year, and then the three words that you see that jump out at you if you had a chance to look at the site. Good question. All right. The, there it the, is. The, the, the letters is P, L, and L, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, so the first one that right. can respond to that uh, will get the free membership for a year. And thank you, Happy, for making that happen. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm so, I'm so happy that this book finally came out. I tell you, sitting in that little, um, sitting in that hotel when you said you were doing this, I was just like, yes. And I kept telling Taiki, I was like, this is a conversation because we've had nobody else come on the show to talk about this. And, you know, we, this is something um, that we, we, we can't, we can't just let this go. And it's such a, you know, it's never a good time when someone passes away, but I just, I use the example of, of my dad, you know, he left everybody something, everything was, you know, everyone knew what to do. He had um, these big, um, uh, 
uh, he was like a, a real handy man. So he had like tool chests. He had like six of them. Everybody knew these are six people getting one. So, you know, right. <laughs> like every, you know, every, just everything was laid out nice and neat. We wasn't trying to find nothing. Um, I was able to get my mom set up like within a week. Um, it was just, you know, it was nice. So it's awesome. Yeah. Have you gotten a response so, yet on the question? Wait, somebody's asking me, what's the email? It's right here, guys. Happyfilm.com. Um, yep. And I can go, you know, actually, I can go on my phone and check this email. Let's see. I need my, my, need my glasses for this one. Um, okay. Here we go. Okay. Wow, we got a lot of responses. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Okay. So, um, okay. So we have five people who answered one, two, three, four. Yeah, five. Okay. All right. So the first, um, wow, this, this person, whoever, um, whoever is a uh, smooth rebel, Okay. They were the first person to answer for both. Okay. So, um, and let me see anybody else. Oh, okay. No. So smooth rebels and winner. So it's 40. You tell me if this is right. 49 95 peace, that's love and legacy. That's it. There it is. All right. So smooth rebel, I'm going to send you it. Well, you, you emailed me, <laughs> you got to email me your, um, I'm, I'm going to email you back, but you got to email me your address and your name so I can get that out to you. That's what's up. And yeah, and we have um, Rashamella, Sharon Anderson, uh, Michelle, Tawana. They all get books. That's what's up. Thank you, guys. Um, yep. Good job. Good job. Well, so I'm good hoping to change some lives. And again, it only happens when there's some action behind it. So we're looking forward to this. I like that when there's action behind it. And right here, one more time, guys, mylegacyitems.com. Send this video, like this video, share this video, check in on whoever you shared it with in two weeks and make sure that they have seen this and that they have gotten onto this website. $49.95 is better than legal Zoom, guys. Okay. <laughs> you gotta watch what you know, watch this. This is black owned. Um, you are to, you know, this is like this information is like a bar of gold. You are a CEO of one of the only, there's only 17 black banks left guys. And we are sitting with Mr. Kelly, who was one of the CEO of, of one of those, which is first independence bank in Detroit. Um, someone had asked if they're in Flint, can they use your bank? Um, if they're where? Can, if they're in Flint, Michigan. Yes, they, they can. Yes. You know, we, we won't be as mobile um because of you know we don't have branches there but the good news is we have agreements now with huntington bank uh which was formerly tcf and chemical bank fifth third bank and putting in agreements with wells fargo and a couple of other banks so you'll have access to us through some of those banks meaning you don't have to pay a a transition fee if you were using their atm oh that's great we don't care where we put our, our ATM machine, you know, our ATM card in. Right. That's great. Right. Okay. Wow, you are just doing it up over there at First Independence Bank. This is well, we're trying. Beautiful. We're trying to yeah, make it easier. That this is a yeah. banking is a challenging uh, space for us, um, and, and we've got to figure out ways to make it easier. Yeah, you know, when you had um, you had your vice president come um, uh, come be part of the panel discussion when we we showed hoppy in um in detroit. detroit yes and you know but i'm from detroit i have lots of family members and two of my family's members came up afterwards it was like i didn't even know first independence bank was black owned i was like yes and they're like i'm going to open up my accounts tomorrow i was like there it is awesome. you know and we didn't yeah like we we wasn't there to say you know join the bank join the bank but you know um the vice president was very uh eloquent in his speech you know, he got he, he got it in. So I was like, yes, yes, yes. So we got to make sure awesome. we start. Well, thank you. Thank that. you for your leadership yeah. on that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. OK, Mr. Kelly, you have any um, final thoughts, any final words? 
No, just to say thank you all for spending time with us this evening. I, I know your time is precious. It's all we have on this earth to be candid with you. And mm -hmm. I'm just so grateful that you've allowed us a chance to talk about this subject in a, in a way that hopefully will matter to you and most importantly matter to your family, not if, but when. And so if there's mm -hmm. anything we can do to help with this process, feel free to reach out to us. You have us on the site there with my legacy items and of course, you can always reach us through Happy. But thank you all so much for spending time with us this evening. Wow. Thank you, Ken. All right. We will be in, in talks. We'll be in talks. Sounds <laughs> all great. Right. You'll take all care. Right, tell you, tell you bye. All right. Uh, certainly bye -bye. will. Bye now. Yeah, that was, that was uh, Mr. Ken Kelly. Um, he has such a, um, a beautiful, nice, lovely wife. Okay, guys. If you were not one of the people I called out, that's okay. You can still get my legacy. Go to mylegacyitems.com. It's only $49.95. Get your, get your affairs in order. It's a nice comprehensive way to do it so that you're not, you know, scrambling for stuff. You know, um, you know, when you when you become an ancestor, the people that you have left um, can, you know, can grieve and not have to worry about how they're gonna be able to live however they're going to be able to live, you know, without you being here. So please, you guys make sure you go to mylegacyitems.com and get started with that. I will be, I will be doing mine tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So we can start putting all, all these things together and don't get overwhelmed because it sounds like a lot, but if you just break it down, just one, every two weeks, one document every two weeks, if you can't do, you know, one a week, you can um, get this going and you'll be further off. And then once you get all your stuff all nice and tight, can let somebody else know, like, look, let's do this together. Um, you know, because we need to keep the wealth because we have wealth. We have, we contribute $1.3 tri trillion, okay, to the, um, you know, to uh, the economy. Come on. <laughs> we need to be able to keep this money in our, our family. And also a shout out to um, Emily Hughes. Thank you for your donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, these donations go a long way. Um, we also uh, donate to uh, Anthony Browder's uh, ASA Hilliard Restoration Fund. And so, um, you know, these things are super important. I want to say um, peace to, uh, oh, there's C-Squad Records. Yes, these are all the people that we follow um, and that follow us on, um, on our social media. So it's really nice to see everybody. Um, what's up, Baca? Um, we see, uh, thank you, um, Miss Brown. Yes. Yes, Kalia. Yes, girl. Trillion. Um, all right. So just to recap, make sure you guys go on to, uh, my legacy, uh, items.com put in hoppy. Mr. Kelly will then donate to us. He'll make a donation, um, to us that will go a long way. And also when you guys are sending this out, check on, when you send out this video, check it, you know, check on your people in two weeks and find out what's going on. Did you, did they get onto the website? Make sure they put your website on. So, you know, Ken can send you a little something and say, thank you. Um, so that's really important that we get this, you know, this is a game changer. Let's get this information out there. Um, later on, starting at the beginning of the year, we're going to have Joelle um, that's going to get our money straight with this life insurance. This dude is tight. OK, so we're going to um, I can't wait to um, for you guys to um, to meet him and he's going to, you know, get us, uh, you know, just, you know, just get our, our our money the way it needs to be. Um, and um, thank you, David Williams, for purchasing the book. Yes, I bought. Yeah, I bought two copies of this <laughs> because, you know, I was like, this is such a, a good read, and especially when you hear when you know, he really goes into detail about some of these celebrities. And you're just like, wow, you know, they have access to everybody. They can just hire a lawyer. But again, I think the feeling is always the same with everyone. You know, we all know that we're going to, you know, pass away at some point, you know, and sometimes just get, putting all this information could, could be daunting. So we want to make sure that, um, you know, this is great that he was able to, um, you know, thank you, Smooth Rebel. Smooth Rebel was just getting it in. I mean, got the membership, a book. That's what's up. Um, thank you, Smooth Rebel. And, and Smooth Rebel, put down where you're from um, in the chat. So speaking of, our next um, time, we're going to be uh, our next happy Hop, uh, our next stop on the happy tour will be in Washington, D.C. OK, Washington, D.C. Anthony Browder is doing a um, 
he is uh, going to, after our screening of the Hoppy film, he is going to do a lecture just for the Hoppy viewers that came um, to the show, just for the Hoppy viewers. He's going to do a lecture and it's entitled, Why Now Valley Civilization Matters to People of African Ancestry. This is so, this is going to be good. Okay. This is going to be so good. DC Smooth Rebel. So you got to come out. Okay. Um, make sure that if you are in that DMV area or if you're on the East Coast and you, you know, stop by and um, get your ticket now. I'm telling you guys right now, these little tickets are going to sell out and we will not be able to squeeze nobody in there. Um, with all the, you know, the COVID restrictions, we can, um, you know, we can only, you know, we can only see how many people we can see. So if you want a ticket to see Anthony Browder and see Hoppy, um, please make sure that you get your ticket now. You can go to um, hoppyfilm.com. Let me put that up um, and get all, uh, you can get all your information. Also, sign up for the newsletter. You can get your Hoppy gear um, and you can also purchase a copy of the Hoppy DVD. One thing that Brother Shamari said at the um, screening in Philly, you know, he was encouraging people every time we got on the radio with him was he was telling everybody, get the DVD so that you can look at it, <laughs> so that you can start to absorb some of this information. The documentary, the award-winning documentary is two hours and 12 minutes long, okay? And so, um, you know, we don't expect you to sit down and just get that all in one little setting, okay? Um, some information you'll know, some information you won't know. It's really good to have a copy of the DVD so that, you know, when people come over, you say, look, let's watch this film. It's going to just push us forward. It's going to push us where we need to be. Um, so please make sure you, um, you know, uh, check out our website. Everything's there. You get tickets for our tour. Like I said, we have DC coming up December 5th, December 11th. We are in, um, Black Atlanta. Um, we'll be there December 11th. And then on the 18th, before Kwanzaa, we will be at uh, we will be in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And then after the New Year, we will uh, we will end in Houston, uh, Texas. Okay. Then after that, take a little break off, you know, for a couple of weeks, and we will be at the One Africa Returning to the Source Conference. Okay. And uh, it's listen. If you can make this happen, make it happen. Um, put down your deposit. Uh, it's three hundred dollars. Uh, you know to um, to secure you a spot. You have until January eighteenth to pay it off. We only have like ten seats left, so you really want to you know get um, you know to you, you really want to go ahead and um, get this together if you if you can go the One Africa Con uh, Conference excuse me, One Africa Returning to the Source Conference and Study Tour, we will have, it's two days of presenters. We will have, um, and we're doing this in conjunction with IKG Cultural Resource Center. That is Anthony Browder's uh, business, non-for-profit that he's had for over 40 years. He will be celebrating 40 years of this um, beautiful non-for-profit uh, next year as well. So this is a really you know good time to be in Egypt. But um, the reason why we will be there, it'll be a bunch of black folks and we will be at this conference in Aswan, Egypt. And on the bill of presenters, we have um, Anthony Browder, Dr. Wade and Dr. Vera Nobles, Dr. Rosalind and Dr. Leonard Jeffries, Professor James Small, Dr. Baina Bello, Dr. Um, Diabil uh, Obanga, Asar Imhotep, Infudishi Juhuti Miss, and Dr. Solange Ashby. They will all be there for a two-day conference in Egypt. It is going to be so much fire, okay? If you can make it happen, come on through. And we are still working. I see someone asking about our New York tour. We're still working on the New York tour. New York got a lot of stuff going on <laughs> in um, in the great state of, of New York. So we are uh, trying to figure that out in terms of a space. Um, so yes. Um, and I don't know, um, David Williams, who's checking for vaccine cards. We're not checking for vaccines cards. All the places that we are going, you do not need a vaccine for. You do have to wear a mask. 
Um, but um, in terms of Egypt right now, you don't need a vaccine. You just have to test uh, negative for COVID three days before you leave and then test, you, you get tested again coming back to the States. Um, and in terms of the theaters that we're all in thus far, there is not a vaccine mandate. Um, so we're, we're good on that point. Uh, so yes, so any information you guys need, get the Happy Film. You can also uh, email us at info happy film if you have any questions. All right, guys. Um, I think that will do it for me tonight. I want to just thank everybody in the chat, David Williams, um, Ms. Combo, um, Tawana Atkins. Uh, thank you. Thank you guys um, so much. Smooth Rebel. I hope to see you in um, in DC. Nubia, uh, Kalia, uh, Becky Brown, DM, as always, uh, Dana Armstrong. And we want to also thank uh, uh, King Simon for always uh, hooking us up with people's phone numbers and helping us stay connected to people. So thank you. Thank you, Philip Lee. Uh, thank you for your contribution as well. And Sharon, um, Omeka, all of you guys. So next week, we will be back for another um, exciting episode of Happy Talks. Um, you know, look for us on social media. Make sure you're following us on all of our social media platforms. All right, we're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Happy Film. Really easy to remember. It's happy film. And remember, you know, look at our Facebook. We got a lot of stuff popping over there um, in terms of, uh, you know, people who we're, you know, kind of connecting and making connections with. You know, it's all right there for people who are um, tapped in and tuned in to us. You'll be able to see, you know, see everybody. So hope that you guys have a, uh, a beautiful week ahead. Enjoy. Um, and, you know, I feel like I need to have that um, that music by the OJs living for the weekend. <laughs> so just imagine that plan right now. But you guys, um, in, in the uh, great words of Professor James Small, peace and blessings. I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community?